Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the idea of cycling lithium polymer battery packs when we buy them brand new. The whole idea around cycling battery packs is that if you are cycling them properly, and this is going to break down into a couple different methods, you can increase the lifespan of those battery packs as well as the performance that you get from those packs. As we break those things down within this video, I want to shed some light as to the history of different battery chemistries to understand exactly how you got better performance from them. Back in the day, we used to use NICAD batteries as well as nickel metal hydride battery packs, and both of those battery packs definitely liked to be cycled when you weren't using them or when you buy them brand new. This bumped up the performance and made the packs perform better. Now, more particularly, particularly for the NICAD battery packs, they often suffer from what is known as the memory effect. And this memory effect would affect the capacity of the battery pack and not allow you to get the full potential out of that pack. Now what you do is you'd cycle the battery pack to eliminate that memory effect going all the way from fully charged to fully discharged so the battery exactly knows how much capacity it's got in a way and this is what would get that battery to perform. When LiPos came out on the market the whole idea was you really didn't need to cycle the LiPos, you buy them and then you run them. However there is some small conversation, some small talk around cycling and that's what we're going to try and dig into to you and ultimately find out is it worth cycling those batteries when we get them. Let's start out by jumping in, taking a look at a couple pointers from battery manufacturers. Here we're jumping on the PulseBattery.com website. We're going to read through their FAQ here on cycling new lithium polymer battery packs. So before you push the edge of performance with your new pack, some gentle break-in cycles are not a bad idea to help maximize the lifespan of your brand new pack. This will get your battery up to speed and help extend the lifespan of your battery, all while making sure you reap the greatest gains of performance. So they do focus on two things, and those two things are performance of your battery pack as well as the lifespan of your battery. Now the way that they tell you to do this is by charging your battery pack at 1C to get that pack up to charge. With a 1C charge rate, this will charge your battery at a gentle rate, allowing less overall stress when compared to more rapid charge rates that certain brands of lithium polymer batteries offer. Along with this 1C charge rate that they suggest, they also suggest a couple other things, and that is to make sure that you're not pushing the battery past its maximum 80% discharge, and they also say don't fly with maximum power levels for the first few flights. So they're actually telling you to don't push your radio control vehicle hard, which is kind of interesting because not all radio control vehicles are going to be set up to push the battery necessarily hard. 100% in one vehicle might be 50% power draw in another vehicle, which is you know very interesting how they actually say this. Instead, what I would prefer them to say is something like, draw only a maximum of 50 amps from this maximum discharge battery current of 100 amps. You know, that would actually make some valid sense here. But you know what? It gives you something to go off of. Once the battery's completely cool, charge at 1C, do this a few more times with five cycles being plenty to get your battery in optimal shape for full power runs. Now we jump over to GensTattoo.com and we take a look at their FAQ of what is battery cycling, how important is it, and how often do I have to do it? So we already know what it is. We'll skip that first sentence and we'll jump into the next one here. Often three complete cycles are are done to help condition a battery, ensure that it is capable of holding a complete charge and to help maintain increase the life and reliability of that pack. Cycling does not need to be done frequently is the last thing that they say here. Now we'll jump into our test and ultimately determine if we see an upfront difference right here, right now. So as this is going on, I want to explain the testing procedure that we've done. We've taken multiple sets of batteries, three in particular, and we are testing them in two different ways. We have one set of battery packs that are being tested by ending up discharging at a 100 amp discharge rate. And the other set of battery packs that we're looking at, we're actually discharging them according to a 1C rate or whatever my charger can actually discharge. I think I have a limit of 60 watts. Then we're gonna compare those results and you know, here's a spoiler alert. 
there was no actual difference, actual measurable difference between those two sets. So what I ended up doing as a result is merging both of those values together and looking at them holistically. As we reach a conclusion here on the IR test of the graphene battery packs from Turnigy, we had a internal resistance of 1.86 during the battery test that we did last video. Now here in this video, we're getting 1.9 milliohms, and that gives us a very small amount of difference when it comes to the IR results of this pack. And we've seen very similar results with the other sets of batteries as well. Now let's jump over to the dyno test where we load these batteries up to 105 amps and see exactly how they perform now versus five cycles ago. Here's the data set that we've collected. Now I want to explain what's going on here in this data set. The very first line that you see here with the number one and then the battery pack, this represents the very first test that we've done previously here on the channel when we're really trying to analyze the battery to see how it performs. Where you see the number two and then the battery pack, this is where we have collected the data after five cycles of two different battery packs. Now what I've done is I've averaged those two cycles, those two battery packs into this data set because I saw negligible difference, whether we're actually discharging at a 1C rate or if we are actually discharging at 105 amps. I've used both methods here for this test, but I've combined the data set so we can really look at more simplified data because there was no relationship when we've statistically anal analyzed these numbers. So if you are looking for a data set similar to this where you can look at all the tested batteries that we've done here on the channel, I'm going to leave a link below. If you're a member of the Tier 2 RC Explained community, you will be able to download a copy of this spreadsheet. In fact, every single month, the very first week of the month, I will be uploading a new spreadsheet for you to download, which is going to contain at least one more battery pack added to the spreadsheet. I'm hoping to do one battery pack per month through throughout 2024. So let's take a look at this data. As we look at the performance metrics from left to right, we can see that the numbers between the first run and the second run, this is, you know, zero cycles, five cycles, they're not that different. In fact, they are actually going down a little bit for each one of these numbers. You can see, you know, 1264 to 1238. And as we go further and look at the voltage at 10 seconds, we see 363 versus 362. And then we look at the second battery pack that we got here and very similar to the the first, they're going down by a very, very small margin. I was actually quite surprised by how small this margin is. And then if we look at the third one, it's actually a little bit opposite. It's going up by a very small margin. Now, ultimately, what has surprised me is essentially all of these numbers are negligible in terms of their difference. And I say that because my testing and measurement equipment can't actually measure to the accuracy and difference that we're seeing in terms of one value versus another. In other words, my margin of error is larger than the percentage difference that you're seeing on this chart. There you have it, the results speak for themselves. Now there's a couple things that we need to you know, go into further and that's talking about the lifespan of the battery pack. When it comes to the lifespan of the cells, this is where things are quite challenging. We simply don't have enough time to cycle these batteries between two and 400 cycles to ultimately determine if there is a difference. And even if we did, it's really difficult to control all the different parameters that a battery is going to experience as you go through day to day and charge this battery. That's just simply if we did it in a lab, it's not going to be worth much because in the real world, we don't have our batteries charging and discharging in a lab type environment. It, one day it might be cold, the next day it might be hot. And this ultimately can make a big difference when it comes to the cycle count of your battery and you're charging it in these different environments. But what I can tell you is that my typical charge that I do for measuring internal resistances is at 1.5 C. And when I'm at the field, I typically use a charge charge rate of 2C. And between both of these charge rates, I do not see a substantial difference when it comes to lifespan. So now we'll jump back into the first things that we kind of opened this video up with, and that's looking at a couple website and why cycling new LiPo batteries is important. And they say that it is important because you want to maximize the lifespan of the battery, as well as maximize the amount of performance that you get out of it. And they list three items in order to do that, and that is charging at 1C, making sure that you don't go 
above that 80% discharged capacity and making certain that you're not flying with maximum power levels for the first few flights. So there's a few things here to kind of take in and, and our conclusion states that essentially after cycling, we don't see a performance difference from our battery. And I know that from charging at a rate of 1.5C upwards of even 2C, I'm able to get maximum amount of cycles out of a lithium polymer battery. Now really when it comes to maximum lifespan, I would state here that if you do want to see the absolute maximum, you can charge your battery at 1C. However, I think a good balance of charge rate as well as you know the time to get your battery charged while you're at the field 1.5 C is not going to be that much of a difference compared with the 1 C lifespans that you're gonna get out of those packs and then when we go on to look at the second article that we have here the second FAQ I should say three complete cycles are done to help condition a battery pack we don't really need lipos condition we're not really seeing any much of a difference it's not like cells were out of balance and we had to get them in balance that was already done right from the factory now the very last sentence that they see here cycling does not need to be done frequently I would actually argue that if you're not seeing any performance you know benefit within the very first five cycles you're not going to see any performance benefit if you do this in the midlife of the battery pack or near the end of the life of the battery pack in fact i would argue that you would actually consume cycles in your limited cycle count that you have for this lithium polymer battery lithium polymer batteries are expensive and they don't last that long the last thing that i would suggest doing is cycling your battery packs just to consume those cycles so that you can't use it let me know in the comments section if you find cycling your battery packs to be beneficial for you. Well guys, hope you enjoyed this video and also hope that you are getting a bunch of radio control vehicles ready for this upcoming RC season. As always, like the video if you do, don't forget to hit that sub button and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one.